Good morning and welcome to the Skinny, which airs here, Fridays here on WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM from 11 a.m. to noon. The voice you're hearing is me, Ray Roa, Editor-in-Chief at Creative Loafing Tampa Bay. I'm joined by my co-host Ben Montgomery, who is here in studio with us. Hello, Ben. Hey, Ray. Um, obviously, Mitch usually opens this show, um, but uh, Mitch, a Florida Phoenix reporter, uh, he's letting us drive the bus today because he's in Tallahassee uh, for this 60-day uh, legislative session. He'll be back in studio April 7th. He may be able to join us uh, via Zoom on the March 31st episode, depending on the schedule at the Capitol, where there's a lot um, going on. We're going to talk a little bit about that. In the second half of the show, Ben and I will be joined by Carlton Ward, Jr., a native of Tampa Bay, a National Geographic photographer who is central uh, in a new amazing film called Path of the Panther, which is in theaters now, screening at Lakeland Spoke Theater this weekend, where Ward will do um, a Q&A. Uh, in, in typical Mitch style, Mitch uh, usually kicks the show off then with news out of Tallahassee, and some news broke late yesterday uh, when a federal appeals court uh, kept on hold a controversial Florida law that restricts the way race-related concepts can be taught. So basically, Florida's Stop Woke Act is on hold. So. Uh, a quick brief from the news service of Florida. Um, attorneys for the state went to the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, Judge Mark Waller in November issued a preliminary injunction against the law, finding that it violated First Amendment rights. So the state had asked this Atlanta-based appeals court for stay of, of the injunction. Uh, basically, it would have allowed the law's restrictions to be in effect while the legal battle played out. But uh, this week, a three-judge panel on the appeals court issued a two-graph order uh, denying the stay. Uh, the appeals court did not explain its decision. In the past, uh, Judge Walker described the law as positively uh, dystopian. If you're not familiar with it, I've always been impressed with uh, Republicans' uh, ability and legislators' ability to come up with cool acronyms. Um, so stop wrongs to our kids and employees act. So stop work. Um Basically, it's a list of series of race-related concepts uh, that would constitute discrimination if students are su subjected to instruction that quote unquote espouses, promotes, advances. Uh, inculates or compels them to believe the concepts. Um, so that happened. And just to address the elephant in the room and stay on this DEI thing, uh, we're in a unique position today, Ben, because uh, news about Florida's approach to DEI has connections to um, our community this week, uh, spread across the country. It's still doing that, um, especially in journalism circles. And that news is that on Monday, uh, you were fired from, from Axios. Yes, sir. I was. Monday night. Yeah, so Monday night, um, you were actually playing a, a Godzilla pinball machine, you told me, because you had traveled to Savannah uh, to spend some time with your girlfriend on her birthday. And, uh, you had racked up 41 million points. I think it was 41 million. I, I asked her the other day if she remembered, uh, because, you know, I have a capacity to forget those small details, but I think it was like 41 and a half million. It was a great run. At one point, I was playing six balls. And uh, have you ever felt like you were in the zone? It looked like I was just playing one ball, but six of them were on the <laughs> It's like the matrix of Godzilla pinball. And so correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm going to try to quickly recap what happened here. So all of this happened pretty quickly, and it started Monday around 2 p.m., right, when Florida's Department of Education sent an email to its entire press list. I got it. I'm sure they got it here at the station about how uh, the governor held a roundtable, quote-unquote, exposing the diversity, equity, and inclusion scam in higher education. Um, we'll get into that, what was in that email in a second, but uh, you read the email and uh, replied, uh, this was it, and we know because we'll talk about that later, your quote, your reply was, this is propaganda, um, not a press release. And, and within an hour, um, the Santis' communication director for the Department of Education, um, Alex Lanfranconi, posted a screenshot of your reply on Twitter. Um, I, I looked at that tweet this morning, and it has more than two million impressions. Um, and, you know, you mentioned, you know, you were in it. Like, can you talk about how things unfolded for you in between your email and, and Wednesday when you finally spoke to me on record about you being fired? Yeah. Is it okay if I start by sort of explaining the, the, the email? A hundred percent. was behind that? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've heard I think there's a lot of listeners really who well. have just heard this the first time now, too. Yeah. So uh, I write a daily newsletter, and that involves about 900 words. Uh, and I want to say, all right, that's not true. Uh, I read with Celine Sampolis, uh, an incredibly talented uh, partner for the past two years plus. Um, 
and we write a, uh, a newsletter, uh, about 900 words, five days a week. For two years, it's been five days a week. Uh, we recently had these seven days, and then eight cents, eight different cents. I thought I missed work on Saturday when I saw Axios uh, email and yeah. the box on Saturday. Yeah, so my days tend to be pretty busy. I'm writing, you know, I'm writing a lot every day besides that, keeping track of a lot of stuff. And also, uh, reading a lot of email, right? This is what we do. Uh, this is how we communicate. If you're in the news business, a lot of times, and so the email just comes in and has a tendency to fill up your stuff. I try to give uh, the uh, press agents, especially for the you know, arms of the government, uh, the benefit of the doubt and give them at least a little bit of my attention so that I can see if they have anything interesting to share. And um, and I feel like that's a, a debt of service to my readers. It's part of why I get paid to do this job, to filter. And uh, occasionally we get stuff that we just let slide right by. It has no news value, nothing to do with us. Uh, occasionally you 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 know you get something and you respond to it. And this is this is what I did. This happens. It's not certainly not the first time that I responded. In sort of a quick, uh, flippant way, I never thought it would blow up like this. I, I didn't think it would be a, a, a big deal. But uh, people have asked, like, why and how do you know how you compose an email? I didn't uh, necessarily really think about it, but I wanted to send them a message that this wasted my time. Like, you're getting paid by the taxpayers of Florida, $120,000, some of them, six figures, uh, these press agents. Their job is to help the press, to distribute information. And there was no useful information in this quote-unquote press release that they sent. And so I let them know as a, as a piece of criticism in seven words, this isn't a press release. Uh, this is propaganda. I should have said probably you've wasted my time. Like, why send this out if we're not going to be able to use it at all? Um, and smart so is that... Smart bit you in the ass. And so, yeah, smart brevity got me. Uh, I think, well, somebody said, look, if you had taken that email and written a story about how it was propaganda and then put that in the newsletter, that probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But because I sent this uh, you know, personal email, um, that was the, uh, and, then, and then it got you know, broadcast. And by the way, it has two million views now. Like when I looked at it Tuesday morning early when I woke up uh, after I had been fired, it had 84 retweets. So this was like yeah. small potatoes, you know, it felt big Monday, I'm sure, for Axios and for people who were like watching it, but it was not a big deal to me. In fact, do you know Jacob Reyes, who uh, is a Hillsborough County Community College student and now works at PolitiFact? I do. He was in line for an uh, internship at Creative Loafing and, and he went with you guys instead. That's right. Yeah, he yeah, worked yeah. at Axios. For it worked out for him. And he transferred over to PolitiFact uh, about a year ago, but he's been through the ringer like this. This has become, uh, uh, you know, the Department of Education has become completely politicized. The Department of Health is, is now politicized. Um, uh, you know, uh, so, so it's, the, it's the spreading of campaign, right? Political campaign. So now you have two branches of government and the press agents who work for those branches of government who are involved in political campaigns and campaigning for Governor Ron DeSantis. And it's my job as a journalist, and I'll, I'll, I'll you know, die on this hill, I guess. It's my job as a journalist to just call BS when I see that. And that's what I did. And I'll take whatever comes. It's not a, um, you know, I told you before, it's not the first time I've been right. in one of these storms. It's not the first time I've been fired. It heals my heart when I hear people like Jacob, who, by the way, is a young, a young guy, 21 years old. He's getting run down by this. Because, because he, he was fact-checking the book. <clears throat> fact-checking the book. And he does, this, uh, he does this every day. This is his work. And he's got to deal with these people who view their jobs as being adversarial, adversaries to the press. They're the, we're their enemies. We are all lefty liberal activists who are trying to, you know, get Ron DeSantis out of, out of office. This is what they believe, and so they don't, um, they don't, they're not helpful. And at worst, they're very hurtful. And it costs people their, you know, their livelihood sometimes. Yeah, for you. I mean, you don't hear out of a job. If you're just joining us, this is the Skinny on WMNF Tampa. I'm Ray Rowe, I'm Creative Loafing Tampa Bay. Joined by my co-host Ben Montgomery, who you've heard talk there, formerly of Axios. We normally talk about the news of the week, but this week Ben found and himself, we in, and we will, and we will. Uh, in, in headlines when he was left. Uh, he was let go after telling the Florida Department of Education that a press release about DEI, the scam of DEI, was propaganda and not a press release. So we should talk a little bit about press releases. And uh, I'll invite you guys to call in to 813-239-9663 if you have a comment. Um, on this. So press releases and the particular release the state went out and 
how government agencies, you've touched on this, have traditionally treated communication with press. So I, th I think at first we should read the definition of propaganda, right? Information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Um, that press release uh, that you responded to included quotes from the governor, um, Manny Diaz Jr., the Commissioner of Education, Ray Rodriguez, Chancellor at FSU, Carrie Sheffield, uh, Senior Fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, and Chris Rufo, a conservative activist who was appointed by the governor uh, to the new College Board of Trustees. There's also a report from the Center for the American Way of Life, which on its website has a BLM funding database, right? And, and I'm just going to kind of run through some quick bits of quotes from that release. Um, in Florida, we are not going back down to the woke mob. And we will expose the scams they are trying to push onto students across the country. Another quote, DEI divides students and at its very core is the antithesis of its so-called mission. Another one. And by the way, just let me say diversity, equity, and inclusion divides people? Is divisive? Like, I mean, it's just troublesome. It's It'll troublesome leave your head spinning. Yeah. I, I, you know, a friend of mine said the other day that... You know, somehow, this some certain people have hijacked the word woke, and it's sort of become a new N word, and half of the country is using it and they have no idea what it means. Yes. And this is what's happening with DEI, right? Like, let's not beat around the bush. Uh, it's the it's the framed intentional intent to disrupt an idea that is useful to us all and has been for a long time that no one objected to until two years ago. Well, until it became something politically that you could talk about to keep people's minds off of inflation and insurance rates and things like that. So just going through a quote like this, and this is a little bit about our jobs, you alluded to it. You read something like that, my heart starts to race because it's a fact-checking nightmare, right? Um, if you search DeSantis and diversity on PolitiFact, talked about it, a nonpartisan website that checks claims from politicians and public figures, uh, you get 541 fact-checks, 249 articles. If you trim it down, to DeSantis DEI, you get 177 fact checks, 106 articles. So that's a lot of information and misinformation to wade through. And that's the reporters who've already done it, yeah. right? So um, you kind of alluded to it. You know, Our job as a reporter is when you get a press release is to say, what is this? Is it worthy of my reader's time? And how do I um, respond? And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what's different about the DeSantis' administration's approach to press releases and using his microphone to share that. So, um, and also, a big thing of this is, I think you got fired because of the screenshot, right, in part, because that thing, quote unquote, was taken off for being seen by people. And, you know, this is kind of insider, but there's so much in my text messages and emails that never makes it to a story. And, and I wanted to ask some people, how different was Lan, Lan Franconi's action? Was it normal discourse between comms people and journalists? So I reached out to two people who, Objectively, I butt heads with, on a regular basis, Ashley Bauman, mm. uh, former spokesperson for the, uh, both the last two mayors, um, and Adam Smith, the current comms uh, director for Mayor Jane Kasser. And I said, hey, was, is screenshotting a response like that and posting on Twitter normal behavior? And, and Ashley Bauman said, never would I ever do that. Mm. Uh, we could disagree, but I try not to burn bridges. And Adam Smith, who, I mean, Adam Smith and I have... Had it, had it with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't agree on many things, you know? He says, I butt heads with people all the time, but I would never do that. And in your experience, had you experienced something like that? No, before? no, no. Uh, you know, and I covered the, the, for heaven's sakes, the Dozier School for Boys for t uh, 10 years. Um, uh, you know, I'm fondly remembering uh, a long running relationship with a gentleman named Frank Pinella, who was the spokesman for the Department of Juvenile Justice in 2008, you know, through through 2012 or something. And this is a guy that I dealt with on a regular basis. I'm trying to get information to unsurface these secrets of the pact that the past and so on and so forth. And we went at it. We Every day we were going at it. And so uh, it became um, it became a relationship. And that's what you develop, right? Like a good working relationship because ultimately these are public servants. My taxes are paying their salary, right? All of our taxes are for this, so they should be serving the public and not, uh, you know, I, I, do, I don't think they should be political operatives. It doesn't do anybody any good. Now, lots of press releases we get are political in nature, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, but they're not, they don't come from, from branches of government that should be apolitical, like the Board of Education.
All right, right on. I want to ask you a few more questions, but let's get some calls here. Bob's been waiting here, wants to comment on your situation. Bob, you're on the air at WMNF. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Both great questions, Bob, and I appreciate the chance to ask to answer, especially the first one. I could, I, I did not imagine it. Really caught me off guard. Uh, you know, my I worked for five different newspapers: West Texas, Upstate New York, a couple in Florida. Um, I uh, I never would have thought this would have happened when the when the when Jacob Reyes, my dear young friend from the uh, Politifact, uh, texted me. Uh, a, a link to the tweet and some of the, it had already sort of started generating some buzz. I, I texted it back, eh, and this was like mid-afternoon on Monday. I thought it's just going to pass right over. Uh, it didn't. I didn't, um, you know, I started wondering after the fact, like, did I do something else wrong? And I remember blowing up at the end of last year uh, about sort of an, you know, this is inside baseball, but like extra work that we'd been given, and um, but not in any way that would have been uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, so, and that's the reason they gave me, uh, that's what I got to work with. So I feel like this, this was a bad move. I feel like it was a move that was made in a silo. I've not reported this out. I have no idea. You have to ask Axios this, but I feel they have not answered this, by the way. I feel it was a made, a uh, move that was made by a couple of people in, in a very pressure filled situation. These are pressure filled situations when you're representing a yes. brand new, uh, media company that's still building. By the way, I, I, Two years of my life I spent trying to build this thing. I, I care about it deeply. I still do. I got half the staff hired, or helped get half the staff hired because they're friends of mine. Um, they're still they're still there. The working journalists, good, solid working journalists. They need jobs. Uh, do not cancel your you know your Axios subscriptions. Um, but this decision was made uh, by a couple of people, and they're stand. It seems like the folks above them, the founders who hired me two and a half years ago, before they hired the people who fired me, they're not, you know, they're standing behind uh, uh, this decision, and, and so be it. That's their, that's their, uh, that's their, that's, you know, they have that, that option, obviously. I, I don't, I haven't asked for this job back, I don't want the job back, but um, I will say the, the journalism community has been overwhelmingly in support, and uh, it's been kind and caring, and also challenging, like my, my, you know, dear friend called me yesterday to say, Hold on one second. Um, this was a dumb email to send. Like, you know, this has no journalistic merit. Why would you send this? And I appreciate being challenged in that in that fashion. I said, you know, it was kind of a dumb email. I don't know, if, you know, uh, I probably should have been more clear when I when I sent this uh, this criticism. But I'm open to that criticism. I'm open, open to the storm here. Obviously, open to media accountability. I lost my job. I'll find another one. Um, I don't think. I don't buy the notion that journalists aren't activists. I think that every single one of them, got, one of us, got into the business because we care about making this world a better place. And doesn't that make us all activists? Right. Yeah, and, and to be fair, you don't talk about this. Your editor, uh, Jamie Stockwell, did not respond to a request for comment from me. Instead, of you, if, spokesperson, Axios editor in chief. Um, if we're said, not we activists, we we're stenographers. Exactly. And uh, so we have some emails coming in here. David Bryant says he's very disappointed. Uh, for Axios firing Ben, um, and has uh, some words to say about the DeSantis uh, press release. Uh, interesting something here, um, somebody wants to know if you could speak about Christina Prashaw. She is a particularly, uh, uh, well, sorry. I, by the way, I, I just say, should say, I have no, uh, uh, I have not a lot of dealings with the, with the, pre with the, uh, the Tallahassee uh, press agents. 
I'm writing fluff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I do some serious journal. Your last story from Axios was about the throwback menu uh, at, uh, at Outback Steakhouse. The Aussie, Aussie Twisted ribs. ribs are phenomenal. Uh, and that Wallaboo pasta or whatever it has is pretty good. But listen, uh, I, it's not like I'm dealing with these folks on a regular basis. So I have nothing to say. I just watch them do this to my colleagues. And it's unfair. This is a different environment. This is like um, trying to sink someone when you're a public servant on the public dole. I don't understand how those two things are allowed to happen. Um, yeah. You know, there was a day when the public servant, when I got here in 2005, I was like, wow, the public information officers help reporters? This is how it's supposed to work. It is great to get a good PIO. John's been waiting patiently out in Newport, out of Port Richie. Let's have John on the air. John, you're on the air, Gary, and then I have It, it, it does have so much project. so much to do with messaging, right, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it does, and the words you use are, are, are really important, you know, and uh, you had an interesting uh, conversation with Tom Jones yesterday, and, and by the way, Carlton Ward Jr. has joined us here. We're going to talk about Path of the Panther in the second half of the show, so kind of talk about what you talked about with Tom Jones, and uh, he suggested that there was a lot that we might not know about your firing. You've mentioned, you know, your push for a better work, life balance not having to do... Um, newsletters in advance before you go on vacation and maybe that was part of it. Um, can you talk about anything that might be being left out of news stories and, and could you reiterate um, how much, you know, Celine is still working really hard to put that out, that, that newsletter? Yeah, so far as I know, Celine's working her tail off. It's just, uh, just her and, and uh, well, I don't know who else is helping with it, but um, she's a great journalist and uh, was a great partner to have on team for the past couple of years and we got to know each other really well and butted heads a lot like you, you do with your uh, partner. I have tried to think of why and I don't know. I, I, I do not think, just to be clear to all the people who might suspect this, I don't think, you know, someone from the DeSantis administration put pressure on Axios to uh, fire me. I don't think that phone call was ever made. I don't think it was an email ever sent. I think it was the it was a tweet. exposure of this tweet and the sort of the pressure that someone who is in Arlington, Virginia, who's not familiar with uh, what it's like to be a reporter on the ground in the Tampa Bay area, might have felt like that was a blemish on the record. Of, on my, on my, and this is, this is what I was told about, on my, this is so tarnished my journalistic reputation in the Tampa Bay area that I can't, uh, you know, they were fired from Axios. So she just, I, I, this person just didn't know, you know. I, I don't think she, I'd never met her in person. She right. didn't know me. Well, um, you ruined all your credibility, man. It seems so. Yeah. <laughs> Hard time. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for talking with us about that. You mentioned being on the ground here, and um, you know, lest anybody think that I'm complete, we're all completely cynical, and what we do is propaganda too. I once saw Ron DeSantis do something really, really cool, and um, he signed the Florida Wildlife Corridor Act in July 2021. Um, our guest here saw that happen. I watched it happen in a movie, and it really moved me uh, in a big way because of the lead-up um, to that scene. Joining us in the studio here at WMNF Tampa is Carlton Ward, National Geographic uh, nature photographer.